O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Aphah, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. Good morning. As many of you know, I'm a permanent deacon and I have a wife and family. In a few months, my wife Don and I will be married 50 years. One of the things that we've enjoyed doing over all those years is camping. Oh, we started 50 years ago in a tent, soon discovered we weren't into roughing it, and then kind of evolved into RVs. The camper we own now is parked on a beautiful wooded lot at a campground about a mile from the Kankakee River State Park. There are many things that I like about being at the camper, like sipping morning coffee outdoors, listening to the birds sing and the wind and the trees. And I really enjoy cooking on the grill. But I must admit, one of my favorite things to do while we're at the camper happens every night about 10 p.m. That's when I leash up our pet beagle, Cookie, and she and I go for that last walk of the day in the dark underneath the big trees. About 200 yards from our camper is a clearing right on the banks of Rock Creek. On a clear night, when you step out from underneath those trees and into that clearing and look up, it's like you can see a million stars. The beauty of that starlit night never fails to blow me away. As often as I've seen it, it never grows old. It, I, I always linger for a while and I prayerfully stare up at the stars and I'm always filled with awe at the wonder of God and His creation. I've gotten on the internet and I've looked up star charts and I've tried to learn more about those stars and those constellations that I'm looking at. It fascinates me knowing that before the days of paved roads, road maps, and GPS, the stars were the way that people navigated. Knowing the stars and their position in the night sky and following them was how they found their way to their destination. Historians tell us that the Magi in our Gospel today were desert dwellers and star watchers. They studied the stars too, and they probably knew them by name and followed them when they were lost. Historians also tell us that about the time of the Magi story, there was a mysterious worldwide expectancy concerning the coming of a great new world leader or king. So it's against this background that we read today's gospel. It describes the Magi seeing a new star in the sky, a star that signaled the birth of a new king. They followed that star across the desert to Jerusalem and eventually to Bethlehem. The Gospel tells us more. It tells us that while the Magi went to honor the new king, Herod the reigning king of Judea, fearing the loss of his own power, <coughs> plotted to kill him. Matthew's story of the Magi serves as a kind of preview of Jesus' life. Jesus will be rejected by many Jews, symbolized by Herod, but he will be received and accepted by many Gentiles, that's us, symbolized by the Magi. So the star in Matthew's story of the Magi is a symbol of hope, not just for the Jewish people, but for Gentiles 
as well. The star is a symbol of Jesus. It tells us that God loves us so much that God's only Son was sent into the darkness of our world to bring us the light of salvation. And this brings us to a practical message that the Matthew story has for our lives. What the star is for the Magi, a symbol of hope, we must be for our world. We must be stars, shining in the darkness. For today, Jesus is to be found not in Bethlehem, but in the hearts and the souls of his followers. We are the stars in the darkness of our world, pointing the way to Christ. Every time we forgive someone who's treated us unjustly, a light shines in the darkness of our world like a star and points the way to Jesus. Every time we open the door of our hearts to the lonely or the homeless, a light shines in the darkness of our world like a star and points the way to Jesus. And every time we reach out a hand to feed the hungry, visit the sick, care for the poor, or right or wrong, in our family, a light shines in the darkness of our world like a star and points the way to Jesus. The Feast of the Epiphany, which we celebrate today, invites us to ask ourselves to what extent we are turning on lights in the darkness of our world and lighting the way to Christ. This feast is not just a story about a star that lit up the darkness of the ancient world and pointed the way to Jesus. It's also a story about you and me becoming stars in the darkness of our world and leading others to Christ. Let us profess the faith that we share. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Just as the wise men followed the star and found Christ, let us look to God who sent us Jesus, our light. That all nations will walk in the light of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that the church will not grow tired of working for justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may strive to find Christ in one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are abused, neglected, or in difficulty or danger may be guided to the revelation of God's grace through the faith, hope, and love of this community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick will see the face of God in their suffering, especially those we now name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have passed from this life and those who have been asked to pray for us to pray for will find the Lord when their pilgrimage of life is ended, especially Maxine Kessler, Don Kruak, Cam Hebert, and Arlene Menson. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of light, you lead all people to your kingdom of hope and peace. Hear the prayers of your people and help us to see more clearly the mystery that is revealed in the coming of your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. What child is this who Heaven, 
We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us share with one another a sign of God's peace.
Let us collect our prayer. <clears throat> Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord is with you. And with your spirit. May all of us be blessed this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Thank you.